Fulbright, another luminary, Dr. Virendra Sangwan. Uh, he will be talking to us on the role of immunosuppressors in survival. Can we have the slides and, and things? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh, Sain has very nicely summarized uh, the thinking. I'll just try to uh, present an evidence and the thought process that dry eye eventually becomes a immune-mediated uh, inflammation and how do we treat that. So when we talk about the ocular surface, we should think about the three elements. These three elements are the preocular tear film and its uh, component, surface epithelia, which means all the epithelial surface facing the uh, environment, and ocular surface sensitivity. So you must think dry eye or the surface as a unit of these three component. The, uh, the, the conjunctiva which forms a smooth, flexible uh, covering, uh, it is essential for the integrity of the tear film and corneal transparency. So when you look at and the immune system, the, uh, the conjunctiva associated lymphoid tissue, uh, they all play very important role in maintaining the uh, moistness. So the epithelia is needed to uh, maintain the tear film. Tear film is needed to maintain the corneal epithelium. And these are uh, the other way of thinking about the stable uh, preocular tear film is compositional factors and the hydrodynamic factors. So not only look at these, assess these functions also when you are examining the patients with dry eye. So the stability of the ocular surface and tear film is very important to understand that there is an interdependence between the epithelia and the uh, preocular tear film and the motor components, meaning the lid anatomical structures and the lid movement and tear drainage. In DUCE 2, we defined that uh, the, tear, uh, the dry eye is essentially instability of the tear film and a potential damage to the ocular surface and this results into hyperosmolarity and the inflammation. Once the inflammation sets in, uh, then it leads to basically activation of the T cells. And th those T cells are in the conjunctiva associated lymphoid tissue. What these um, cells do, uh, the epithelial cells, which are the surface epithelium, they start secreting pro-inflammatory cytokines. They upregulate uh, inflammatory uh, genes. And then you see upregulation of all the inflammatory markers. There is a lymphocytic infiltration, including on the conjunctiva and the glands. Uh, and also there are hormonal uh, derangements. If you have diseases like OCP, Steven Johnson, or GVHD, or Shogun syndrome, that is not only dry eye. So that you must di distinguish that those patients would need systemic uh, treatment, and topical treatment alone is not sufficient. Similarly, like patients with severe VKC, uh, these are the patients who are not just dry eye or allergy. They need much more stronger treatment especially when you have presentations like this, they would cause uh, stem cell damage, uh, dryness, keratinization, and the surface toxicity contributing to, to, the, to leading to that surface uh, disease. And these patients, I prefer to treatment, especially if you have moderate to severe disease, then treat them with uh, systemic immunosuppressives. I'm not going to talk about the details of systemic immunosuppressive because we have published quite extensively on those topic. If there is a mild VKC, maybe yes, uh, lubricant, mast cell stabilizer, and as and when needed, mild topical steroids may be okay, but moderate to severe, uh, I would strongly recommend use systemic treatment. Sometimes you may be okay to use supratarsal steroid injections uh, when there is a limited upper tarsal uh, disease where you don't want to expose the patient to uh, systemic treatment. And this also may work, especially in the acute or Lapse when it happens uh, frequently. This is uh, the role of uh, topical cyclosporin uh, in VKC. And uh, VKC, this to me is only mild uh, or maybe early moderate disease, but not in the severe diseases. Uh, similarly, there is a good amount of evidence uh, that I have been using uh, cyclosporin 2% from very early on, 98, 99, we used to make ourselves. Now we have these uh, preparations available. So again, back to the core mechanism of the dry eye. Uh, remember that we said there is a uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine and activation leading to the tear film stability. And one of the examples is very typical example is Shogun syndrome.
it is primarily a systemic uh, disease but affects the glandular structures and uh, here both topical and systemic immunosuppressive will be required. Cyclosporin, especially uh, when it is available in the formulations that nowadays what we have, helps to uh, you know, prevent the apoptosis of conjunctile epithelium. Remember we said there is a upregulation, so it down regulates and protect the, the topical cyclosporin, regulates the epithelial apoptosis, induces apoptosis of activated T cells, meaning the cells which are active on the surface, and they will be uh, tackled by the uh, cyclosporin. It also uh, inactivates the T cells. It inhibits the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So essentially, when you think of a patient who has, uh, like Sian was saying, that if you have a, a surface staining and patient needs topical steroids, think of adding topical cyclosporine. If patient have a systemic disease, alone uh, these uh, treatment will, uh, so topical treatment will not be sufficient. And now you have the ophthalmic emulsion, uh, which is good as it uh, BD doses. So I won't go, this dry eye disease due to management plans are available and I'm sure this will be repeated many, many times over. Uh, but uh, the uh, plan presented and that uh, Sian uh, and uh, Saren, which they have published recently in 2023 IGO, I think the excellent article and all of you should read those. That will help you to develop your own algorithm and uh, make your own plans. So in summary, all forms of dry eye eventually are immunomediated. That one thing you should remember with whatever the type of it is. So therefore topical or systemic immunosuppressives are necessary depending on there is a systemic involvement or not. And dry eye associated with systemic immunomediated diseases like OCP, Steven Johnson, Sjogren, VKC, GVSD, uh, they cannot be treated only with topical. You need systemic treatment and uh, think about managing and where this uh, immune-mediated uh, uh, cells are coming on the ocular surface. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yes, sir. Mm, I don't... Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. It's available. I really don't have much experience, direct ex experience of using. So I'm not able to comment, but I don't know whether it is an immune modulator or not. Anyone of you have used cyan or any of you? Actually, I have used at my eyes. Your own eyes? Yes, yeah. yeah, so did, do you feel? Uh -huh. Did it help? Chalo, if maybe it is a belief, belief and if it's working, good. No, scientific, I'm, I'm, I'm not really aware. Sign. Do you have any specific? small thing that you need to be careful about with uh, both uh, chloroquine and there's also retinoic acid which is in the market uh, as a gel is that they are phototoxic mm -hmm. okay so if you are otherwise healthy and you are using it if you have an adequate tear film then it doesn't cause too much of a problem i don't know how much benefit it causes but you should be careful that it can cause a lot of surface toxicity because it's photosensitive particularly if you're using it during the daytime uh, particular retinoic acid, but chloroquine also causes it. So patients who already have ocular surface disease, and if you give them chloroquine or retinoic acid, they can get much worse. So I am not sure of how much benefit they cause in uh, patients with inflammatory dry eye, but they, I am aware of the fact that they can definitely cause damage. So you have to be careful. No, I not on the macula. Sure. Not macula, but surface, surface epithelial. No, like there are many drugs now which are like people uh, for glaucoma they use, but they do cause severe ocular surface problem. Yeah. So I need to leave if with your permission. If there's any question for me, I can answer in next one minute and rest. I, I would like to leave because I have to have a, uh, to catch a flight. Okay. See, the uh, topical cyclosporin, if you want to use, you should at least try for two to three months. And that alone, you should not start. I would start topical steroids, lubricant, and cyclosporin. And once uh, you uh, taper off and uh, switch off the steroids, topical steroids, and then continue for two to three months. And if there is a patient feels that, yes, there is a subjective benefit, and al also the need for topical lubricants has gone down, I would continue at least for a year or more. Some of my patients are using for more than five years now. Yes, sir. 
the, and then you only twice a day uh, cyclosporine drops, nothing else. <laughs> antioxidants, uh, I don't use generally. I don't use any antioxidants, uh, either drops or oral. I think the oxidants, as long as you're eating normal balanced diet, I don't think you need uh, any extra. Unless you believe that is helping, it's your choice. I don't use. I use in pediatric age also. Minimum is I'm, I mean, I've used in as old as six years, seven year old, uh, but that is for more VKC, not for dry eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah, VKC I've used in the young kids less than 10 years old. So it's not like two or three years, I don't see that uh, frequently uh, the VKC, but five years, six year old, I, I use. And I, I uh, they like either use topical uh, uh, cyclosporin or tacrolimus, but I prefer in young kids tacrolimus at night once and uh, during the daytime uh, use other uh, medicines with minimal uh, uh, drops. And if you are using systemic, then I don't need to use anything topically because it becomes very good compliance I issue. I think rest of the question, please ask them and they will enlighten you. I'd like to take your permission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sangwan, for being here and being part of it.